I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. It's like, no, no, you know what? I take that back. I do get it. We're talking about old Vince McMahon here. So you have to think about the things that he does and therefore as a result his on your product does, his company does, from that lens. And you say, well, how do you make heads or tails of that? How do you really make any sense of that? Um, the, the reality is you don't. <laughs> as a general rule, like, you start seeing people in their 70s and crap running shit, like, that's not always a good thing. Like, if you think about it, if you're of my age or lower, would you really want your grandparents in charge of major corporations, major governments? I don't think so. You know you wouldn't. You know you wouldn't. You can love them to death and be like, hell no. But there's just so many things that you really question about the WWE of today. But the one thing I don't get is this constant need to lose the plot. This constant need to distract away from the real point and purpose. This constant need to just gum shit up all of his own doing. Like you look at the road to WrestleMania. You had the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. You had the Royal Rumble Winner Edge. You're off to the races. And then somewhere along the way, Mr. Breakfast Club himself, Daniel Bryan, managed to squeeze his ass in there. And you squeezed his ass in there. So that way you could have some dumbass triple threat at WrestleMania which distracted away from the heat that you had between Roman and Edge, to now you're splitting it three ways. It felt forced. It felt stupid. It didn't freaking work. And while you can point to, well, they got the job done at the end of the day because the WrestleMania match was great. Well, I'm sorry, but a few months later, Edge and Roman, I thought they had a damn good match too. That could have just been as easily the main event of WrestleMania. We'd have been just fine. The point being was, if you're going to sit there and try and involve Daniel Bryan with Roman Reigns or Daniel Bryan with Edge, I didn't fundamentally have a problem with that. But why wait? Why not wait until after WrestleMania? Now, part of that obviously was because, well, you find out that apparently they didn't have Daniel Bryan deal done for the long term. That he contract did come up soon after WrestleMania, which is just peak stupidity. So why in the hell would you sit there and shoehorn a guy in? That you don't even have under contract long term. Like, is that stupid, stupid, stupid? And you swear to God they're doing the same damn thing here now with the John Cena and Roman Reigns story. Here's Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, the head of the table, the top dog on SmackDown. It's his yard now, clearly. He's the dude in WWE. Period. No question about it. All of a sudden, it's like, who's his next challenger? Boo, 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 boo. Here comes Mr. Fruity Pebble, bitch ass, hustle, loyalty, respect John Cena himself. But it works. Like, this is a match we've been waiting for for months. It's John Cena coming back, and he's taking on the top dog. The dynamics are different. Roman's a different character. And while John Cena's missionary John, the same old bullshit you saw 10 years ago. 12 years ago, 15 years ago, which is part of the big problem here. But it still has a big fight feel. It still feels like a match that is worthy of a main event of a big four pay-per-view. Hence, ding dong, dumb dicks. That's why the hell you bring John Cena back at the time and fashion that you did. That's why you're setting up to John Cena versus Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. There's no reason to overcomplicate the shit. Right? But now all of a sudden we're squeezing Finn Balor into the damn mix. Why? Why would you do anything to distract away from the real story, which is John Cena going after championship number 17 and Roman Reigns, the head of the table, trying to protect his spot from the breakfast club bullshit of John Cena saying, I can do my own business, thank you very much. It's past, it's present, you know, it's so many things. It all works. Focus on these two. Focus on getting heat with this. Focus on getting Cena over. Focus on getting Roman over. Focus on getting their story over. Focus on everything on their damn main event match at SummerSlam. And now all of a sudden you get the freaking Calvin Klein model coming in. Is he going after Roman or now he's going after Cena? Why does Cena get a title shot but Finn Balor gets like... like 
Why would you sit there and intentionally complicate this shit when you don't need to? If you want to feature Finn Balor in a prominent fashion, fine. Not my choice, but also not my business. If you want to do that, fine. Then why not save him for a post-SummerSlam program with Roman Reigns? You've got a story there. Wasn't Finn Balor the first Universal Champion? Wasn't it he that never actually officially lost his title? Like now he's back and he sees Roman at the head of the table and he wants what he feels like is his? Like there's storytelling there. How interesting it is might be a different story. How much I'd really want to see that is another, another entirely different story. But the point I'm getting at here is I'm always a sucker for stories and characters. And I can at least say fundamentally there is some type of story that you could play with with Finn Balor and Roman Reigns. But you should not be playing with that story right now in any way, shape, or form when you should be focusing 100% on John Cena and Roman Reigns. And Finn Balor's like, I want my shot at Roman Reigns and I've got to go through John Cena to get it, so be it. If you want a Finn Balor to challenge a John Cena, then why didn't you do that instead? It's weird, it's stupid, it doesn't really feel like it makes a whole lot of sense, but still the point I'm getting ahead here is now... The crap you did at WrestleMania, in the road to WrestleMania, that was distracting, that was dumb. You've now decided to repeat that again in some form with your next big four pay-per-view and I just don't get it. This just cannot be that hard. This just cannot, cannot be something that you want to make so damn difficult on yourself. Because what's the outcome of this? John Cena beats a Finn Balor and then he still faces Roman Reigns at SummerSlam anyways? Well, what the fuck was the point there? I mean, come on, are you really going to have Finn Balor beat John Cena and then Finn Balor wrestles Roman Reigns one-on-one -on -one in the main event of SummerSlam? Uh, no thank you, and nobody would buy that shit other than the Finny Marks and give me a break. Even they'd be like, oh, I don't know about that one. You would hope. They have any brain matter left. Or what's the third option? You're going to sit there and now you're going to smash Finney into this match with Cena and Roman and now you're doing another triple threat? Like, no! There's no need to do that. There's no desire for us to see you do that. There's just no want for that. There is no purpose or reason or meaning for that. You already have enough trouble writing well for the angles that you do in the most part, especially your top ones. Why would you add another layer, another piece of that pie into the mix when you don't need to? And I mean, like, if you want to talk about it here, like, let's be real. You've positioned our tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns, as the top dog, the big dog. It's his yard now. Blah, blah, blah. Like, he can't be just investing his time on any random jamoke here. Any random jabroni. He just can't do that. Like, you have to put him up against believable opponents. You have to put him up against big-time opponents. That's what you do with a guy like Roman Reigns. Finn Balor, no offense, folks. It doesn't matter if you're offended or not. You have to face reality at some point. Sometimes the truth hurts like a bitch, like a shot to the nuts. He's not that big of a deal. He's just not. John Cena, Roman Reigns, and the landscape of current WWE are absolutely huge, massive deals. You've got a star of the Fast 9 franchise, and he's Suicide Squad 2. He was a villain in the Fast 9 movie, so he's a part of that franchise now. He's getting more and more out there in Hollywood. Like, Cena's a big deal. He's a bigger deal probably in Hollywood, or starting to be, than he ever was with WWE, where he drove away millions of people. Um, but that's a story. And now you're associating Finn Balor with him? It doesn't elevate Finn Balor. It distracts away from the other two, takes the heat off of the other two and their story, and it's just stupid. And you look at him and you're like, one of these is not like the others and not necessarily in a good way. Like, if all of a sudden you were sitting there saying, like, Bobby Lashley's coming, and he's like, no, 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 no. Fuck Cena and Roman at SummerSlam. I want Cena at SummerSlam, or I want Roman at SummerSlam. There at least you could say, this is a legitimate badass and Bobby Lashley. 
that wanted to face one of these guys in the main event of SummerSlam, that at least, if you're going to distract, distract for something like that, where you're elevating the other champion and you're featuring them like a prominent badass and associating them with Cena and Roman, that you could at least buy, even though that would still be stupid. I don't get it, man. Like, part of the whole push to WrestleMania, like, really took a nosedive for me once they started forcing Daniel Bryan in. And not just because of the fact that it was Daniel Bryan or anything like that. It was just the fact of all of the focus and all the emphasis should have been put on Edge and Roman. And I'm right. And you know, God damn it, I'm right. You could have saved the stuff with Daniel Bryan for later. Like, it was just distraction for the purpose of distraction. You put yourself in your own damn box that you had to dig yourself out of. And that's just stupid. And here, you know, you either do something really stupid that was a waste of everybody's time, or you do something stupid that's going to ultimately feel like, largely, a gigantic waste of time. I just don't get why old Vince McMahon just has to, has to, has to make it so damn difficult on himself. Like, even when he's got this opportunity to do some really simple but sensible good business, he just can't effing help himself. And it doesn't get any less frustrating over the years when you continue to see him do it.